It's Morphin' Time! Hello, this is Sad here, and welcome to my review of the Thundercats Ultimates Thunder Tank. This bad boy is finally here, and in order to even review this, I had to clear my entire Transformers display, which took a lot of work and a lot of boxes, because this is massive. This is the actual box for the Thunder Tank, and it's huge. And this was the only way I was reviewing it was up on top of this thing. So... We're going to go through every detail of the Thunder Tank. And I really intend to review this fully because even though this is a limited item, there was only, I think, 2,437 produced. At least I had carton number 53 of that, according to the actual box shipper. I don't know if you can still buy this anywhere. You're going to have to go probably for resellers because Super 7 sold this only through a pre-order window two years ago in February of 2021. So the fact we finally got it is amazing, but if you are trying to find one of these, I wish you the best of luck. But this video is going to be more showcasing what was done here, so that way people have an idea of how Super 7 handled a gigantic vehicle like this, and if they want to know about future vehicles that may come up, this is how it went. Now for me, of course, I bought the Thunder Tank. No questions asked. As soon as they started revealing it, I was like, yes, I'm in, I need it, I really, really want the Thunder Tank, because... If you are a longtime Thundercats fan, this is the most important vehicle. This is as important as the Batmobile. This is as important as the Turtle Van. This is the vehicle for Thundercats. I wasn't necessarily interested in buying every vehicle for Thundercats, and I don't know if any more will be produced after this, but this is the one I was like, I gotta get the Thunder Tank. It's too iconic. It has to be got. And it did cost a pretty penny. This originally went for $450 on Super 7's website, with a $40 shipping fee, at least to the U.S., so nearly $500 in two years of waiting later, here we are with the Thunder Tank. And only something like the Thunder Tank would get me to spend that much money on something this large. Because I've done other large items like Galactus or the Sentinel from HasLab or the Titan Clash Transformers, but a lot of those are tall. This thing is going to take up some real estate width and lengthwise, and that is only something I'm going to do a couple of times in my life. In fact, I can't even think of another vehicle at the moment of this size that I would buy again. This Thunder Tank is very, very special. And also what's very special about it is the fact that this is something I've wanted for basically 20 years of my life. And considering I'm 27, that means pretty much most of my life. I was watching Thundercats in the reruns that happened on Toonami and Cartoon Network in the early 2000s. This is where I discovered and loved the show. And this is always something I wanted to have, a Thunder Tank. I always liked the idea of the vehicle, I loved the way it is in the show, and I wanted a Thunder Tank just like I wanted Thundercats toys. Which, of course, at the time, there weren't any Thundercats toys. In 2011, we got Thundercats toys, but no one did the classic Thunder Tank. I think the closest we got is a Hot Wheels car, which we'll bring up later on in the video. And yes, this is, I think, 100% better than the original vintage one. The original vintage toy could only hold two figures. This I've been able to fit almost nine to ten figures inside of. This is a properly full-scale Thunder Tank as we saw in the animated series, and I can't wait to show it to you all. So on that note, we're going to crack into this, but before we get any too farther deep into the video, if you hit the like button, the subscribe, and the notification bell, that really helps me out, helps support this channel, and keeps me going on doing videos, so I appreciate everything there. And if I forget anything in this video, or if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, because I definitely am going to try to cover everything, but I might miss something along the way. So let's get into it. Here it is, the Thunder Tank. So here's the packaging for the Thunder Tank. We've got this beautiful painted mural where we've got uh, mutants on the hill here with Jackalman, Mumra, and Slythe. And then we have in the tank, we've got Lino and Panthro, Chitara, Tigra, and Pumira. Which is funny because I think that artwork specifically correlates to waves one through three uh, character-wise. And that's kind of funny because, well, we're at the point where we got up through wave six now before the Thunder Tank shipped. And that's just how production goes. But I love the artwork. Uh, I also hate the artwork <laughs> because I can't get rid of this box. It's too beautiful. And that means I got to like bag it up and put it in the attic and hope it fits up there. Uh, also, as you can see down here in the corner, featuring swiveling turret, working tank treads, opening cargo bay doors, two different windshields, thundrillium storage, seating for six Thundercats, front mounted laser cannons, giant claws with hidden weapons, scale defense, seven inch Super 7 Ultimates figures, and the Ultimates logo. 
Also, it is for ages 14 plus, the adult collector. Because, yeah, I don't know uh, anybody younger than 14 that would even want this. Um, but, in general, this thing is just an impressive beast of a box. And again, I hate how beautiful it is. Now, the back side of the box here is the same as the front, but you can see the two flaps up top. I will mention the styrofoam inside actually has an etched Thundercats logo on it. And I just love that. I love the extra detail there. It's just a little bit extra love on the inside of the packaging. The top of the box has some feature callouts from the seats to the controls, to the blaster, to the jaws and the claws. And then on the side here, we got glow in the dark eyes. We got a samouflage. What the heck is a samouflage? And then we've got ready for attack because this thing comes pre-assembled. No assembly required. So before we look at the tank, let's look at the smaller accessories it comes with. This is a canister of Thundrillium, which is the material they use to build all their tech. It looks kind of squishy, even though it isn't. It's a nice solid hard piece of plastic. It's a nice diorama piece, but it doesn't really like have a specific storage spot in the tank. It's just kind of an extra piece, which is really nice. And then there's the uh, infamous Samoflange. The samouflage is a tool used to work on stuff, I guess. There is no explanation for what a samouflage is. There is a famous outtake from the 1980s show uh, where the actor for Panthro asked, what the F is a samouflage? And to this day, I still don't know. Even the 2011 show was like, what is a samouflage? But the cool part is that regardless of what a samouflage is or isn't, Panthro can hold it, and he looks pretty cool doing it. I like that we have, you know, the wrench, the goggles, the stuff that came with the ultimate version of Panthro from Super 7. Works really well with the Samoflange. And if you want your display to be Panthro working on the Thunder Tank, totally an option and definitely doable. Here is the Thunder Tank. It's gigantic. Uh, so apologies for the backdrop. There is a window here because this room I'm in is unfinished and there's some Transformers posters. Just ignore all that and focus on the giant 20-pound uh, thunder tank that's sitting right here because it is absolutely huge in fact from tip to tail uh, this thing measures out at about uh, 25 and a half inches uh, long which is just over two feet which uh, i don't know the centimeter conversion on that i apologize i am an american who does not use the metric system because i wasn't taught it anyways this whole thing is huge it is absolutely huge like from the length perspective and you can see from the front here this thing is about uh, 15 and a half inches wide. Uh, so yeah, this thing is not going to fit in most shelves. I don't even know where the heck it's going after this unless I relocate the Transformers. But this thing is absolutely huge. One of the cool advertised features is the eyes here do glow in the dark. And I've had the lights on it for a while. So let's see how well it glows. So you can see the glow in the dark does work. Uh, I had this thing facing this way for a while. So that's why that one's a little bit more charged up than this one. But the glow-in-the-dark eyes is a cool, cool feature. So I figure while we have it at this angle, let's talk about its attack mode features. First of all, the jaw opens up, which is just amazing. This is something it does in the show. It kind of, you know, bites through a mountain in the actual opening. So it's really cool. Nice and sturdy. Like, I don't feel like that's going to mess with anything too much. Big old jaw. Uh, what's kind of fun is you could put things like a Thundrillium container in there if you want it, like, eating the Thundrillium or something like that. Totally an option. Uh, really, really cool. Now, what's also cool is you do get the flip-up cannons that were, I think, famously on the vintage toy. So we got the little one up there, and then either of the side uh, paws flip up, and there is these little guns here that can be positioned a bit. Now, I don't have a way of, like, because of the weight, I don't think you can lift it to haunch it up too much on these wheels, because it kind of just flattens out to this position. But you totally got that. Now, if you did want to position the claws uh, raised, they do rotate all the way up uh, like that. Uh, you may notice that this doesn't like click into that. But if you wanted something like this or something like that, it kind of just goes into a couple different positions. Now, I want to call attention to the treads here. There is a hunk of uh, plastic that you know feels like rubber, and then these are all individually treaded. So you can actually move the treads along the wheels here which you can see it works pretty good. So that's that's pretty neat. I, I like the tactile feel to that because it does feel like tank treads. Now, in general, if you're looking at, uh, you know, rolling the Thunder Tank, I found that those just kind of drag. They're not loose enough to where they're just going to naturally move with the tank. And in general, it just doesn't move that well because of the absolute weight on this thing. Now, you can see here that there are wheels. Uh, there's one big one in the middle and then two on the side and then two up here. 
But like I said, the treads don't want to move too much on their own. So it's not going to roll if you're looking for it to roll. Now what's really great is like I love the sculpted and molded details here. All these vents are sculpted in. They're painted. All the rivets are painted. All of these details. There's like a paint line around it. And they are separate pieces. It looks really, really good. It has this nice like authentic feel to it. Like it actually has texture. Like none of this stuff feels toyetic as much as it does feel kind of more realistic for what is a cartoony vehicle, but you still got all these kind of tactile features to it. Now we're going to go handheld to look at some of the details, like the way the snout is done, but more specifically, the beautiful Thundercats logo on top. There is a split in the middle here because this is how you open the back canopy, but the actual logo comes together really clean. And it's really well painted and molded there, and it just ties the whole design together. But you can see that pretty much from any angle that you look at the Thunder Tank, it's going to look really good. And that's that's an important thing when it's this large, because not everybody's going to be able to splay it at the same angle. So it looks good from all angles. So what's cool here is we have this kind of nice gray matte top to it, which does come off. Uh, you can see they actually sculpted in the panel lines here. And then you also get an alternate option of a clear windshield, which I believe was used when they did the submarine kind of mode where it would go underwater, but I like the clear view because you can see which figures you have inside. And speaking of putting figures inside, there's no way you can see it from this angle, but there are two seats in the front. So here is the actual driver's and passenger seat. So the driver's seat is here. It's got the two uh, sticks. The passenger seat has another stick, I'm assuming, for cannons and weapons. You got the stick drivers there. You can see all the readouts here. What's really cool is these are all painted in, so no stickers whatsoever. Again, this thing was ready out of the box. You didn't have to do any assembly. And then you see you got the buttons on the side on this side, and then the matching ones on this side, all sculpted and painted in. You're probably wondering how well do figures fit in those seats. So of course, we got to put Panthro in here. I've pre-prepped the figures into sitting positions. Uh, it can be kind of tricky to get them into the driver's seat because of the actual like hands there, but I want to kind of I want to do this on camera to show how he fits. But you got to yeah, there we go. Got him in. So he does fit. Now to get him to hold those handles does take some more maneuvering, but it is doable. You can get him there. And then I think the iconic option would be to take Lionel, which I've put his claw shield on his waist just for the sake of science here. But once you get past the little like handlebar thing, the dry stick, boom, there they are. Both of them fit inside. And then if you want to put either of the canopies, cause they are the exact same size, uh, Lionel's hair can get a bit in the way. But once you get it around his hair there, considering we're doing this one hand, it's pretty good. There we go. So you can see you actually have Lion-O and Panther. I'm going to fix lion -O's hair. It's kind of stuck in the back there. So there we go. With lion -O's hair positioned, it does look really good. I do like the way that both sit in there, and I like that you can see it with this panel on. I do really prefer that option overall. All right, so here is the interesting part. Because, yeah, two figures in the front, that's amazing, considering how large the Thundercats figures are. But how many people are going to fit in the back? Uh, first things first, there is a cannon. It extends up. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, if you can see here, we'll zoom in. I'm really glad I have a good zoom lens for this video. Uh, you can see all the paint details. These are actually rotatable. The, uh, uh, the actual handles do rotate. And you can see that the cannon does pivot. It's got three barrels in the front, uh, which is kind of what you would expect. I thought there was some adjustability to them, but it just seems to be sort of like plastic warping. <laughs> My camera can't stay focused on that. Uh, but you got that, and there's two foot pegs down here. So you can see one of them and one of them here. Which means uh, certain figures are going to hold it better. I know they show Chitara on the cannon. Probably better, because her arms are a little shorter. But some of the male characters, like Tigra, won't hold it as well if you have the feet pegged in. Um, but other than that, pretty good. And it does collapse in there. What's also really cool is you can see as I manually move my light. You can see all the tech details on the wall. You got the Thundercats logo there. You've got all the little like doodads, bibs and bobs. And then uh, we got to change camera angles to show anything else. All right, we can see in the back there, there are four identical chairs. Uh, there's two that are nice, a bench seat, love seat, two individual ones there. Uh, this panel has the same details mirrored from over here. And there's one more wall. And this wall here has like a targeting guide and some extra uh, sensors and nodes and vents. And it looks really cool. It's like a mini base for the Thundercats in here, uh, which is pretty amazing. But can we fit the rest of the team in here? So 
So there's everybody in the back, and I know you can barely see them, so we'll go back to handheld. All right, so here's where uh, I'm talking about the seating. So first of all, uh, Chitara fits pretty good if you have her back hair, like the hair that's sweeping back. Otherwise, her butt doesn't quite reach the seat. Uh, you can see Wily Cat is in there. Uh, this is the Mattel one. I'm sure the Super 7 one will fit as well. Uh, Linkso, he sits pretty good. Bengali sits pretty good. Uh, we got Wily Kit uh, standing here. And then Pumira, uh, her skirt does become kind of an issue, but it does flex enough to get her to sit uh, well. You just got to make sure her hair doesn't hit the back of the headrest. And then Tigra is the problem. So first of all, uh, you know, I think I talked about how of the main Thundercats, this Tigra figure is like not the best. His feet too far out to hit the foot pegs because of how thick his arms are. And then I can't quite get him to hold both handles because mine has a backwards elbow. So it's kind of, you know, kind of sucks. But this is not a fault of the tank so much as Tigra because I can't get Tigra to sit. Because as far as his legs will move forward, which means he's basically unable to sit in any of the seats. However... Uh, he can stand, and he can stand right there in the corner. He can push that down, uh, hopefully not launch Chitara. So you can see Tigra standing. Boom, boom. Everything closes up inside, even with them standing in it. So it works out in the end. Now Chitara here can hold the cannon better, I think, than Tigra. It definitely lines up to go over the canopy better, because her elbows do go full 90. However, those foot picks are just kind of useless, because... As you can see, that's a natural position for her to be at to hold the cannon and standing. Yet her feet are nowhere near where those pegs are. So those pegs need to not be so close, need to be farther out, or just, I don't know, not even bothered. Um, the cannon in general does feel a little bit cramped. Uh, it's the most cramped feeling thing here. But there is still plenty of room in here. I'm going to see if I can put a couple more figures in this back section. So you can see, if you want to leave the canopy open, you could put characters like Snowman or Jaga in here. Jaga almost fits. It's just the top of his head is a little bit tall. So if this comes over, it's going to crush his his little uh, point on his hat. But, you know, you can actually fit... You know, that's still pretty good. The, the fact that Snowman can, like, stand in there, even if this is not going to close on him, the fact that he can even... And even without the helmet, still not quite there. The fact there's room for him to stand back here. So if you wanted to go top-down... Uh, Thunder Tank rolling out with uh, Snowman and Jaga in the back. That is an option. Now, to be fair to the people that don't like the newer Thundercats, I like these three guys. They're great. Uh, but if you want to just have the Season 1 Thundercats, there is room for everybody to have a seat because you got, you know, the main two up there, the other four back here. Hopefully the uh, Super 7 versions of Kit and Cat sit better. But then again, look at Tigra just kind of sort of lounging. Uh, you can fit them in here, and of course, Snarf would just run around the back because uh, that's what Snarf does. Um, but yeah, if you wanted just your Season 1 Thundercats in this, pretty cool. Now, I do want my Season 2 Thundercats to be in here, but if they did get their own vehicle, they wouldn't have to. Uh, in general, though, if you don't want to have standing room only for Kit and Cat, you can also have them on their hoverboards. They got a few options there, which is pretty good. But the fact that there's this much room in the back section of essentially a gigantic vehicle... Like, the fact that we can even squeeze the entire team of Thundercats back here is an impressive feat. So here's the display option. You can have the tank, you can have the kids in the hoverboards, Tiger at the cannon, and they're also following Mandora to wherever she is headed. Totally an option, and I like how the bike, the electrocharger that I reviewed, and said, wow, that thing is really big, is just dwarfed by the Thunder Tank. Uh, this is what is really fun for me, is not just having the tank, but all the figures to go with it. It's just this really complete experience that sort of fulfills like a childhood fantasy of having like a tank that feels this big and substantial that holds the entire team inside of it. That's that's what sells me on this so much is the fact it's big enough for everybody to be in it. And here's another option where the Thunder Tank is just going to blow the bad guys away because what are they going to do to stand up to this thing? I love this. This is just so freaking cool to have a vehicle that just feels properly in scale with these collector's figures, right? We don't usually get anything like this, and it's really, really special. Any other company would have said, no way, we're not doing a Thunder Tank. But Super 7 went for it, and I really, really like the result. You could also display it like pirates are raiding the Thunder Tank, trying to take it away from the Thundercats. Or maybe instead of a battle, Panthro and Linkso are driving... Lionos meeting of the heroes because there's a multiversal threat that must be taken care of and Lionel with trusty Bengali by his side is leading a meeting of heroes from different worlds. I love that this thing is big enough that I can just like stick other characters from other toy lines in here 
like no problem. This is why toys are fun. Have fun with your toys. So I guess the only question I have left is, do I feel like it was worth it? The $490, the two year wait? Oh, hell yes. This has just been such a delight to have it. I hope that I've expressed that in the video. Sometimes it gets hard maneuvering things of this size uh, to really express the joy that I feel from having this. It's such a weird thing, right? Like there's certain things that, you know, as we're watching shows uh, and movies and stuff that we like, and us as toy collectors really want that physical representation of things. There's just those certain things that for whatever reason, just were out of reach or just were not a thing. Like no Thunder Tank has ever been released in scale before, uh, especially not the vintage uh, original Thunder Tank from the 80s. And uh, so this is just a one of a kind thing. It's weird because I think we use the phrase sometimes like, I've waited my whole life for this. But like in a lot of ways, yes, because I, you know, I was waiting in the, the, the passive sense, right? Like I wasn't waiting, sitting, going every year on my birthday going, is this going to be the year that someone makes a full scale Thunder Tank for a Thundercats line that covers it? No, it wasn't like I was asking for it constantly. But the thing was, is that once I saw it, I knew that that was something that I wanted for so long. Uh, it's it's kind of like the you don't know what you want until it's offered to you kind of thing. But this is something I absolutely just adore. I, I adore the insanity of making something this big for a show from the 80s that hasn't had a successful reboot that essentially only exists in a niche corner of pop culture. And the fact that there's less than 2,500 of them because they're made to order, that explains how niche of a market Thundercats really is. And yeah, I feel like the price was worth it because this is something I really did want deeply. Like I looked at it and there was, I was like, no question, I'm getting this. You know, I was going to make a way to afford it regardless. Luckily, I'd just come off a high paying job and had some back pay that came in right as it went up for pre-order. So I was, you know, I was doing good. I was financially secure at that point to go, yes, let me just buy this $490 beast. And then for them to include things like the Samoflange... Uh, it's just such a great little, like, detail. Like, they didn't need to include this, but this just makes me happy because it makes me know that the people designing these things know the material, uh, well. And yeah, for the longest time, I thought this Hot Wheels car of the Thunder Tank was gonna be the closest I got to owning a Thunder Tank toy of any kind based on that 80s design. The vintage toy was just going for too much for how little it did, and, you know, it just wasn't worth it, but this one was the closest to a cartoon-accurate Thunder Tank that that we were gonna get is what I thought. And yet here we are. Uh, and having options like the clear windshield, I really do like the clear windshield. It's gonna keep the dust out. Uh, Cause I wouldn't have left this closed up with the other one. I would have left it open like this, but having the clear windshield piece really does help with the dust. It, it's not perfect. It's not sealed as you can see. There are some gaps, but there's that. The fact that you can fit figures in the back standing and the thing still closes is just great. Like, now my shelf has room for villains and Silverhawks figures where the Thundercats were. Um, the only question is, where the heck do I put this? Uh, it's the only thing that I think that throws off the experience slightly is the uh, crushing reality of this is big and heavy and can only go in certain places in the house. And I gotta figure out where that place is. But I'll have fun doing it along the way. This is just an absolute delight to own. It's not for everybody. It never was going to be for everybody. It's for those crazy Thundercats nerds like me who wanted a full-size, full-scale Thunder Tank. And Super 7 delivered with a nice, high-quality release. And I couldn't be happier. So that was the Thunder Tank. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, that like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell, the comments, it all helps get this video out to more people. Because when you hit the like button, YouTube's like, oh, more people want to see this. And they start pushing it out to other viewers. So I appreciate all of that support for all of these videos. I deeply love Thundercats. I know it's a niche kind of hobby and a niche interest. So anytime that these videos do well, it makes me really happy. I'm going to keep doing them. So be sure to keep up with them because if you missed any of the previous reviews, they're all on the channel now and there'll be more in the future. Plus the Silverhawks Wave 2 is already shipped for me. So I'll be getting those very soon. So stay tuned for those as well. There is more of this coming, and I would love for all of you to enjoy those videos in the future. Also, be sure to check out my live streams Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern, where I talk about toys and Blu-rays and all kinds of fun stuff. Or suddenly we derail for a half-hour discussion on The Matrix. It's how it goes. The live streams are really fun, so go check that out as well. Also, be sure to follow me on social media at Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at SoundOut12. 
And also be sure to check out my awesome graphic designer on Twitter at darkclaw 643 You can find Hero Club at HeroClub.com for geek news, interviews, and more. And until next time, this is Sound Out Sag. Thundercats! Oh!